Cabas foot, also known as a high arched foot, as the name implies, is pretty much the exact opposite of a flat foot and because of this has its own inherent set of potential problems. What causes a cabas foot? Most people who have high arched feet find this as just part of their normal skeletal structure. There are many people who have a cabas structure as a result of neurological diseases such as cerebral palsy, Charcot-Marie tooth disease, spina bifida, polio, muscular dystrophy, Friedreich's ataxia. In the case of neurological origins, the high arched foot tends to be a progressive problem, usually resulting in some form of bracing to protect against drop foot and to aid in better gait management. Surgical intervention is also likely in many cases in an effort to reduce the effects of the high arch and add more stability to the foot overall. Most cases of cabas foot deformity seen in the office is of the idiopathic or natural occurring form. There are two forms of cabas foot deformity. Implications of a cabas foot structure The naturally occurring high arch can be further divided into two subclasses, rigid and flexible. Rigid type cabas deformity, the arch stays virtually the same height whether the patient is on or off his foot. Compared to a more flexible foot, the rigid high arched foot tends to be a very poor shock absorber. This can lead to ankle pain, knee pain hip pain, iliotibial band syndrome, flexible type cabas deformity, the arch will be very high when a person is off weight bearing, but when they step down, their arch will flatten out to some extent. Lateral ankle sprains are also more common in the high arched foot. Cabas foot can lead to conditions such as capsulitis, metatarsalgia, sesmoiditis, severe calluses on the ball of the foot, particularly under the first metatarsal bone. Hammer toe deformity, blue arrow. Hammer toes develop as a result of the toes riding up on the metatarsal heads due to the high angle that is formed at the height of the arch. Plantar fasciitis is also very common in the cabas foot structure. Treatment of the cabas foot. Treatment for either the rigid or flexible cabas deformity generally requires the use of an orthotic. Custom orthotics The problem here is that most store-bought arch supports are not high enough to even come close to supporting the arch. The purpose of an orthotic in these cases is to more evenly distribute body weight across the whole foot and reduce the pressure on the heel and the ball of the foot. By evenly distributing body weight, the foot is able to function more normally and most of the problems mentioned in this article can be reduced or even eliminated. In many instances a custom orthotic will be necessary to properly support the arch. Shoe selection also becomes an issue in the very high arched foot. Most people with very high arches cannot wear shoes like loafers or non-zippered boots as they simply cannot get their feet into those types of shoes. A good conservative laced shoe is a better choice. Scraping of calluses that form on the ball of the foot and even on the heels in some individuals, helps reduce discomfort. Surgery in very severe cases, especially of neurological origin, surgical intervention may be necessary in an effort to lower the arch. The risks of the surgery should be weighed against the potential benefits. Various procedures can be performed including Soft tissue release such as an Achilles tendon, lengthening and plantar facial release. Osteotomy surgical cutting of bone to either reduce the height of the heel, calcaneal osteotomy, or to lower the metatarsals, midfoot or metatarsal osteotomy. Bone stabilizing procedure triple arthrotesis where the rear foot joints are fused to lock the foot in a certain position. Read the complete article at www.foot-pain-explained.com slash c-a-v-u-s underscore foot.html.